Tonight in the city of dreams, some dreams came true in the WNBA draft. For the women selected and for the league itself, the 28th WNBA season this coming summer will be its most anticipated ever. Thanks to one person in particular, you just heard Kathy Engelbert mention her name. In one of the worst kept secrets in recent hoops history, as you just heard, the Fever selected Caitlin Clark with the first overall pick. Giving a franchise that has missed the playoffs the last seven years, the most relevant and buzzed about group in the entire league. How relevant? Out of 40 regular season games in the WNBA, the Fever will be on national TV 36 times as the journey continues. I feel like I'm ready for a new challenge. I feel like college was obviously amazing and you get to a point where it's like, all right, I'm ready for something new. And um, that's exactly like one of the top reasons I wanted to leave is like you get to play against the best players in the world every single time you step on the floor. It's one of the most competitive leagues, is the most competitive league in the world. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of spots to go around, so uh, you better bring it every single night you step on the floor. I'm so lucky I get to play with such amazing players and a, a roster full of a lot of talent. Um, and obviously a post player in my eyes is one of the best post players in the league, one of the best post players in the world. Like, it's just feed of the ball all day long. Like, come on now. <laughs> all this has come with just the person that I've an, I am and the player that I've been able to be. And that's exactly how I you know, want to go into the WNBA is don't change anything that I've done. Um, obviously learn, adapt, um, find ways to get better. Um, you know, people are going to expose my weaknesses, but that's the amazing thing about it. That's the challenge that I wanted. And um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is just rely on the people around me, have a lot of fun, be myself. And that's why I got into basketball because it's fun at the age of five. And how lucky am I? It gets to be my job. So um, I'm just very fortunate. Much more on her and from the crew in Brooklyn coming up in just a little bit. Let's run through some numbers. Rookie of the year, it's supposed to be Clark in a runaway. 14 of the previous 27 top overall picks went on to win the award, including her newest teammate, Aaliyah Boston, who she just referenced in terms of feeding the ball to. Lots of eyes are going to be on the fever. I mentioned 36 of those 40 on national TV. Chris, two years ago, they won five games. Five games and nobody was talking about him. Now they have a South Carolina and Iowa superstar, not on opposite ends of the court for once, but his teammates, and they play 40 games. So they're expected to be about a 500 team. So even with the star power and prowess of Clark, they're looking at the fever to be about a 21-22 win club. One more number for you, Chris, in a shocking <laughs> development. Ticket prices are now going through the roof. Her first regular season game, mark it down at Connecticut, May 14th, ESPN2. Her home debut a couple days later, the New York Liberty will be in town. The atmosphere at a fever pitch out in Indiana, a staggering 17,000 fans. Tickets scanned to watch at the watch party. Thousands of people cramming into a building in the Midwest to watch Caitlin Clark. Nothing new there. This is the franchise's 25th anniversary. And Chris, as you can tell, they are kicking off number 25. What a scene. They seem so shocked. Not really. This class, though, has more than one potential superstar. Look no further than Cameron Brink at two to the Sparks. Brink can defend the rim, winning three Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year awards in her career. She was the only Division I player to average 15, 10, and three blocks last season. The Sky, they're ecstatic to take home the reigning champ, Camila Cardoso, at number three. After coming off the bench for her first two years in South Carolina, Cardoso blossomed this season. She led the Gamecocks in scoring and rebounding while pacing the SEC in field goal percentage. Speaking of champs to the sky, Angel Reese also heads to Chicago, going seventh overall. Reese took home SEC Player of the Year this season on her way to an AP All-American selection. She was just one of five players to average 18 points, 10 boards. Here's Angel after hearing her name. Um, just being able to be authentic and people love me because who I am. I have those tough conversations. I say things that a lot of people are scared to say and take that scary step. I took a scary step of faith going to LSU, not knowing what could happen and look how my life has completely changed. So being able to just believe in yourself, trust in yourself and have an amazing team behind me is, is, is great. Here's how the rest of the first round shaped up. Rakia Jackson went fourth overall to the Sparks, and UConn's Aaliyah Edwards was taken sixth to the Mystics. Three of the final four picks of round one were international players, marking just the fourth time in draft history that there were that many first-round international players. Zubin. Back to more WNBA conversation. Big night, draft night. Big night for Caitlin Clark. Already got the fourth shortest odds to win an MVP in her rookie season. 
I was just talking to our guys. These odds are changing as we speak. A lot of action on Caitlin Clark all night long. Only one rookie has won the MVP in a rookie year. Candace Parker with the Sparks. Back in 08, this group saw all 36 women get selected. The energy in Brooklyn for this draft, just incredible fans lining up for hours, waiting to see Caitlin Clark and her new teammate, Aaliyah Boston. Caitlin making sure she captures the day with pictures of her family and pictures with fellow members of her draft class, Angel Reese, Cameron Brink, all of them part of the first round of this 2024 draft with Caitlin Clark, the first overall selection we have all been anticipating this moment we knew it was a formality but it comes it's here and Caitlin Clark selected number one overall to the Indiana Fever and it couldn't be a more perfect fit for both Caitlin Clark and her future teammates with the Indiana Fever this is a young woman who averaged nine assists per game her senior year she has velocity accuracy on her passes here this is Hannah Stolke running the floor this coming season if I'm Nalissa Smith I'm getting in the best shape of my life because she could be a rim runner uh, getting those passes look at the velocity the accuracy on this pass right into the shooter's pocket if you're a great catch and shoot player like Kelsey Mitchell, like Katie Lou Samuelson, you are going to thrive with Caitlin Clark making these passes. Here's another one. Hand, right hand, one-handed pass over to the corner in the shooting pocket. The shooter is wide open. Again, Katie Lou Samuelson, Kelsey Mitchell, they are going to thrive in that. And here in the pick and roll game, it's Hannah Stolke again, but in a couple of weeks, it will be Aaliyah Boston, another elite finisher at the rim. So excited to see how Caitlin fits with her new teammates. It's just, it's an analyst dream for Caitlin Clark to be on this team and to think about her connection with Aaliyah Boston and the basketball IQ that those two players have and that one-two punch that they can be in the pick and roll game is going to be so much fun to break down and then to take it to another level. You're talking about Caitlin finding all of her teammates as they get used to playing with her and her ability to relocate and then for them to potentially find her on the back end, she can thrive as a scorer as well. I've talked about how Caitlin Clark puts defenders in constant conflict with themselves. It becomes even harder now that they're also in conflict. Do we double team Aaliyah Boston? Do we double team Aaliyah, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Smith? How are we going to guard this amount of talent? Adding Caitlin to it complicates everything. You no, know, the other thing that's amazing about Caitlin, and we heard Dawn Staley say it on the podium after South Carolina won its championship, how she has carried a huge load for women's basketball and lifted the game. And what's amazing is the grace with which Caitlin has handled all this as a 22-year-old young woman. I mean, even thinking about her appearance on SNL, where she makes sure to call back to all of the greats in this league who built the foundation and opened the door for her to walk through. Not only is she electrifying on the floor, but she also has been such a, a brilliant ambassador already for the game off of it at such a young age. We even heard that with her. As soon as she got drafted and she's interviewed by Holly Rose, she starts talking about her new teammate, uh, Aaliyah Boston. This is a young woman who has had the weight of her the world on her shoulders at times and not only performed every moment that she's gotten on the floor, but has handled it with incredible grace. Yeah, and we, she also sat here and talked to us about how even her weaknesses being challenged, she's embracing that. She's competitive. She's a fighter. She's resilient. She has heavy, strong shoulders, and that's just going to continue to grow in the league. Well, we all cannot wait to see Caitlin Clark as a pro May 14th against Connecticut on ESPN2. She makes her debut. Put it in your eye calendar right now.